Hey YouTubers, so in this video I'm going to be doing a full breakdown and assembly tutorial on how to build your own powerful burning laser. Uh, this uh, build requires two common hardware components that you can find in desktop computers such as uh, computer power supplies and a uh, optical drive with uh, both CD and DVD rewritable capabilities. So first let's start by modifying this uh, computer power supply. Uh, this power supply is rated for 550 watts of power which is more than enough for uh, building your own powerful burning laser. And we're going to need four uh, individual wires uh, for modifying this uh, computer power supply, two of which come from the, uh, the main 24-pin connector, and another two from these power rail uh, connections here. So to find the first two wires in the 24-pin connector, all you have to do is count down four uh, columns here in the pinout, and you'll end up with the uh, green wire here, and right beside that, there's the uh, red wire here that we'll need. And that's it. So as for the other two wires, uh, one of these will serve as the negative terminal wire, and uh, this yellow wire here will serve as the uh, positive uh, output wire. And you can get these from the uh, power rail uh, P2 uh, connector. And what you want to do is you want to make two cuts uh, diagonally on the uh, connector there, and then you'll have your two wires ready to go. So here I have the uh, modified wires uh, connected directly to this uh, multimeter here. And we can use this multimeter to uh, measure the uh, voltage output of this uh, computer power supply. What we should see is a uh, measurement of uh, 7 volts at least, or perhaps a potential of uh, 7 volts. But uh, here I'm uh, going for uh, 7 volts uh, right on the dot. So I'm going to hit the switch here. And uh, the first thing you want to hear is you want to hear a relay switch uh, go on and we want to see the fan spin and uh, of course we want to see 7 volts uh, reading across the uh, digital multimeter here. So here I'll switch on the power supply and there you can see a uh, reading for uh, 7.2 volts or a potential of uh, 7.2 volts which is very good and here we have the uh, fan spinning uh, quite nicely and uh, you probably couldn't hear it but the, the relay switch uh, did switch on so here I'll uh, switch off the uh, power supply here. And there you have it. Now we see a nice drop down to uh, zero volts. Uh, and see the fan stop there. So this power supply is uh, ready to go. So here I've went ahead and soldered the uh, green and uh, black wire together. And uh, I also clipped off all of the uh, other remaining uh, wires uh, for better flush. So to sum up the wiring modification here, I uh, connected the uh, power supply on wire to the uh, negative uh, terminal wire which came from the uh, P2 uh, power rail connector and uh, these two wires will be used as the uh, positive uh, input to the uh, driver which is this yellow wire here and this uh, red uh, 5 volt uh, positive wire will be used as the uh, negative output to the uh, laser diode pin. As for assembling the driver I'll be using this uh, chief component here which is a semiconductor. It's known as the LM317T uh, adjustable regulator and this will be heat sinked using this sink and uh, silicone and uh, for the wiring I'll be using this thick gauge uh, output wire to the output pin which goes to the laser diode and I have an assortment of wires here for the uh, input uh, regulation so here I've went ahead and tinned the uh, pins on this uh, semiconductor so here's the completed and heat sink driver now into the hard part now we have to uh, extract the uh, laser diode inside the optical drive here this is an ASUS uh, DVD and CD rewritable drive. This is a, a class 3B uh, warning sticker uh, to warn you that these are uh, very dangerous uh, lasers and you definitely should not be tinkering with these type of lasers if you have no uh, hands-on experience uh, with electronics of any kind. And uh, the model that we will be working with is the DRW24B1ST. And uh, yeah, so first we gotta uh, pop off these four screws here. Alright, now that I've removed the uh, front cover, we have access to the internals here. As you can see, we have multiple different electronics going on in here, but what we really want is the uh, optical sled, which is uh, right here. So I'm going to have to remove that optical sled by removing a bunch of connections and PCB boards and uh, even some steel rods. Let's get to it. So here I've successfully removed the optical sled from the optical drive as well as some other additional components. So the next step is to start tearing this thing down carefully. So before I start disassembling the optical sled here, I want to make sure that my workspace is free from any static electricity, as just a small amount of charge could actually destroy some of the uh, precious components contained in the uh, sled here. So here's the optical sled with the uh, cover removed. As you can see, we have one laser diode right here, 
which is actually a multi-mode laser diode. It is consistent of uh, red and infrared wavelength uh, radiation. And it's got uh, three pins there that we can uh, remove. And over here we have the optical components, such as a, a mirror and uh, some filtering and some other optical components that we can scavenge. So all you have to do is break apart the uh, plastic here to uh, pull out some of these uh, components here. So here I have uh, successfully removed the uh, laser diode package as well as a few optical components. So these are the two main optical lenses here. Uh, this one right here is used for uh, converging and focusing uh, the beam into a focal point. And here is the uh, laser diode, which unfortunately is uh, permanently fixed inside of this, uh, this mount here. So unfortunately, I won't be able to uh, remove the laser diode to its completion, but I can use this mount as a uh, weak heat sink. And uh, all I have to do is desolder the pins from the uh, board here. Alright, so here I have the uh, laser diode pressed in a vise here. So the next step is to uh, apply heat to uh, each pin here very carefully. And then I'm going to let that cool for a little bit. And then I'll be uh, reapplying uh, more heat, and that will uh, that should be enough uh, heat to uh, swiftly remove this uh, PCB board uh, off of these uh, pins here. So here I have uh, successfully removed this uh, PCB board from the uh, laser diode pins here. This laser diode is known as the uh, LNCT laser diode, which is an open canister uh, laser diode. So uh, the pin out here is quite simple. Uh, the middle pin is the common pin. Uh, this pin over here is used for the red output emission state. And this pin over here is used as the uh, infrared uh, output emission state. So after a bit of troubleshooting, it turns out that this uh, power supply uh, driver configuration won't exactly uh, pan out for uh, this type of laser that we'll be using. But that's okay, I can uh, reuse these uh, hardware components for a different laser project. Instead, I've swapped it out with a 750 watt computer power supply and my own uh, custom built driver here. And uh, this should uh, correct uh, many of the issues that I was experiencing earlier. So here is the uh, preliminary setup. I have the uh, laser diode uh, heat synced to these uh, two heat sinks here. And I have a uh, aperture head. I'm currently only using a uh, single lens for converging and uh, focusing the uh, laser output. And I've successfully uh, wired the uh, connections here for uh, the uh, common pin and the uh, red output uh, emission. And for uh, insulation and thermal stability, I'm using uh, aerogel uh, insulation across the top here. This device is also known as a single spatial mode laser and is great for applications regarding uh, reading and writing the minuscule grooves on optical discs. Now I can switch on the uh, device here. Let's see what the, it can do to some uh, electrical tape here. How about some cardboard? Hard uh, plastic. How about a match?